Now the reason you'd want to do this is for editing textures. This way you don't have to view it on the TV, you don't have to load it up on the SD card, you don't have to burn a DVD, you don't even have to have a Wii. You just load it up in here, check out your textures. Anyway, let's get through this and explain how to do it. Right when you open up 3ds Max, you're going to notice a screen similar to this. Whether you're running 2010, 2009, whatever, it's going to be fairly similar to this. You have four squares here. The main square that we're dealing with is the bottom right one. If you want, you're more than, you're more than welcome to select the center here and, in fact, make the bottom right one the main focus by and large. Now, once you've downloaded the downloads from the uh, description, you'll have something that looks like this. A giant list of characters and their folder names and stuff. We're looking at Mario today. Mario R1 to be exact. Within this folder you'll notice TGAs for all of his textures as well as the model itself. I've done the liberty of extracting it for you from the game so you don't have to. You're going to take this, simply drag it over right to here in this square. Once you let go, it's going to show something like this. Moving the mouse will move Mario himself. Once I click, he'll become grounded so that he stops moving. Alright, sweet. Now, in order to get better angles and views, we're going to go up to here to views, steering wheels, toggle steering wheels. Version 9, it might be fairly uh, slightly different. You might have to pause the video at this point to figure out what's going on with your your wheel. But this is the wheel. Orbit moves you like this, so you can move around all the way around the character. Pan brings you up, down, left, and right. Specifically, zoom. Once you've got your mouse over where you want to zoom, clicking that and moving backwards and forwards will help you zoom around the character. Now. Click on the M key on your keyboard, M as in monkey. Okay. Doing so will bring up something similar to this. Alright, if you're using 2009, which you may, these would probably show up as smaller squares. In order to shrink it in 2010's edition, you can click on this. Now, this is where we're going to be placing all of our texture files, the TGAs that you've edited and created. I'm going to use the example from Hitler Mario that I've made. The body is here, another piece of his body is here, eye is here, etc, etc. Simply by finding the TGA file, and then dragging and dropping to this sphere, We'll put it onto this sphere. You're going to need to click on Diffuse. In 3ds Max 9, you're going to click on Diffuse Bitmap. Bitmap again. Double click. And then here, you're going to search for your .tga file. I'd click on this, and then I'd click on Open. And that's it then it would place it right here on this sphere. Unless you had a different sphere selected like this, then it would place it on a different one. Now that Diffuse is selected, there's a couple settings that need to be changed in order for this to work. Angle, with a U next to it, needs to be 180. Notice how that slightly changed this sphere to change by 180 degrees. Leave the other one at zero. The other important thing that you're going to need to find is something that looks like this. Not to be mistaken with this, which is background, this one is called Show Standard Map in Viewport. In 3ds Max 9, the button is fairly similar. It has a checkerboard looking square right here that needs to be selected. Now in order to apply this onto Mario's hat, which is what this TGA file is. We're going to select this orb, drag and drop it straight onto his hat. This should bring up an assign material selection box. Assign to selection will assign it to Mario's entire body. Assign to object will merely assign it to his hat. That's the one we're looking for. 
Notice how the texture is immediately applied once your wheel is out of the way. There we go. Immediately applied to the texture. Let's continue doing this for the rest of the model pieces. Click on the next sphere. As you can see, this one is for his overalls and shirt and whatnot. Drag it over into the sphere. Now that you've dragged it over into this sphere, let's follow the same steps that we followed before. Diffuse, where this little M is, or in 3ds Max 2009's case, you'll just click on Diffuse with the button that's next to it. Click that. Remember, using 3ds Max 2009, you're going to need to click on Bitmap and then find your TGA file and import it onto the square. The drag and drop method may work. I don't remember testing it on 2009, so I'm not sure. If someone could confirm that in the comments, that'd be great. Once again, the angle needs to be changed to 180. Hit Tab to move on to the next square so that it changes up here. Again, we need to check mark this Show Standard Map in Viewport Square. Drag, drop. Which one was it, do you remember? It was an object. Now, as you can tell, he's had certain attributes applied to him now. Where is his shirt? Well, some textures overlap. For example, this first sphere actually contains Mario's hat, his sleeves, As well, as well as his face texture. So by dragging and dropping the first sphere onto his shirt, you'll notice that his chest changes and so do his sleeves. It's also part of his gloves. Assigned to object. His gloves turn black or gray. Be careful not to drag it to his forehead, which is a completely different texture. You're gonna see how the numbers change as I highlight different parts of his face. This has underscore NCL1 underscore eight and this is underscore NCL1 underscore 5. Dragging it onto the correct part of his face will change his face texture. Now, as you can imagine, one of these two has his mustache. Let's see if it's number one. Recall. Yes, it is. So we have his mustache as well as his hip. 